But now let's turn our attention to Manchester United. And it will be fascinating to see what they'll do this month. So Jim Radcliffe's purchase of 25% of the club gives him control of football operations. And with that, the chance to move them in a new direction. Right, Dave, what can we expect from Ineos? I think it's difficult to expect them to make major changes to the playing squad in this transfer window, simply because I think there's going to be a period of uh, an almost getting to know you period from Ineos and, and their structure. I think that, you know, today Brailsford has already been pictured at United Games. He's been at the United training ground, uh, doing a bit of a deep dive on, on the way that Manchester United have structured themselves over the last few years. So I think he'll be someone who will be advising Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Uh, he's their director of sport at Ineos. So I think recruitment is an obvious one that they will need to look at over the last few years. You know, they'll be appointing a chief executive. They'll be appointing a, a sporting director as well. So our chief reporter, actually, Carve Solokol in November, mentioned that Paul Mitchell was someone that they were looking to appoint in that sporting director role. Uh, you know, he was former head of recruitment at Spurs, former sporting director at Monaco. So they have been doing due diligence on sporting directors over the last couple of months while this purchase and investment of 25% of the club has taken so long to go through. So they've been doing work in the background. So recruitment coming in, I think selling on players, they'll be looking at an improve, wanting to improve on that. I know Sir Jim Ratcliffe had an opinion on the Casemiro deal and whether that was value for money to give such a long contract to a player of his age. So I think there'll be no shortage of people having a say on where they think United can go next. And the Jadon Sancho situation is another one that needs to be resolved by Ineos. Whether that is you know, the unlikely situation of a reintegration or whether that's a severing of ties completely or whether they're able to move him on for a fee in this transfer window. So there's lots of things to be looking at. That's just the transfer wise and recruitment wise. There's so many things off the pitch that Ineos will be looking to improve as well. Well, there's more, more to talk about, isn't there, Quaker, with, with the signing? Let, let, let's see what they've done in that department in terms of players coming in since Eric Ten Hag took over. What does that say to you, Kwaku? It's a very mixed bag in terms of profile, in terms of the price tag, in terms of the quality as well. Um, the Galerian sign in there is Anthony, 86 million pounds. Um, nobody can argue that, that he's justified that price tag. Um, and he's a player that when he was playing in Eredivisie, he didn't necessarily light the league up and Man United took a big risk in terms of spending that amount of money. What you think about those players when you go through that list though, is that a lot of them either played in the Netherlands or played for Eric Ten Hag. He's familiar with a lot of those players. So it suggests that the recruitment team at Manchester United put a lot of faith in the manager um, who is fairly new to this league. And of course, injuries have hampered some of the progressions of those players. If you look at Mason Mount, um, he's a player that hasn't really got going at Manchester United, but there has been a, a major outlay there. So like Dave said, Ineos are going to have to come in and look at the recruitment policy at Manchester United because looking at those signings there, not many of them have hit. And that's the issue with Man United. Not only do they not sign great players or players that go on to be great players at Manchester United, they don't sell well either. And that's all part of recruitment and, and all part of the business that Eric Ten Hag maybe has a hand in, but it's not ultimately all laid at his door. Uh, and, and Dan, every club, it seems like every club need or at least want a striker and Manchester United... Are they any different if you look at their current options? I think Martial, you could say, probably hasn't been fit for purpose for Manchester United for a few years now. I think he's been there eight years, has never really hit the heights, apart from maybe his first few seasons, that, that Manchester United wanted him to. You look at Hoyland's record there, that there's no doubt that he's going to be a, a good striker. I think he's got all the ingredients to be a good striker. But for the fee they've paid for him, Manchester United need him to be good now and be able to play every week now. And I'm not sure that he's able to do that. We know that Rashford plays his best in a wide position, mainly from the left, doesn't really like playing as a, as a central striker. So I think there's a definite case that you could say Manchester United need a striker. But they've spent so much money on that, on that list of players that Quaker was just talking about. They've not really given themselves the wiggle room to be able to bring in another goal scorer. And we know how much proven goal scorers cost. They've, they've spent £70 million on someone who probably isn't a, a proven goal scorer. So, so to now have to go again and try and, and find a strike, I feel like they've just left themselves in a really, really difficult position. And the, the striker market is the hardest market to get right. Yeah, it is. But you look at a player like Anthony Martial, why is that situation allowed to develop to where it is right now? He's entered the final six months of his contract. This is a player that had a Ballon d'Or clause when he signed for Manchester United. Why, is it, why has he got to a point now where he's going to leave the club 
for free? Why did they not recoup something for a player that was clearly surplus to requirements two or three seasons ago? It just speaks to the mess at Manchester United. And it's easy to point fingers at Eric Ten Hag. It's easy to blame the manager. Yeah. And of course, he has to coach his way out of this situation. But the whole structure at Manchester United needs to be looked and revamped if they want to achieve the things that they previously, previously achieved. I think they almost dish out new contracts at times to try and protect themselves and keep players valuable. But I always think that when they've done that over the next few years, that player has rarely gone on to do anything. It's almost worked against them. The fact that they've offered those players new contracts or that they've triggered extension clauses. We, we're seeing right now with Varane that they're maybe moving away from that model and deciding not, not to extend that and contract. The, the, the higher, yeah, they kind of went back on themselves, didn't they, with that one it looked like for all intents and purposes, the higher was, was going to sign a, a new deal. But Quaker has just kind, kind of said it there that they don't really buy well. They haven't managed to sell successfully. And as I said earlier, I don't think the players that are already there that have probably been under three or four different regimes now, I don't think players that are there generally improve. So there's, there's a lot of work for Ineos to do, not just off the pitch, but on the pitch as well. In terms of selling players, Kwaku, who could go if they wanted to raise funds? We've already talked about Anthony Martial entering the final six months of his contract. They're not going to recoup anything for a player who's in the final year of his deal. Rafael Varane also entered the final year of his contract. It's not up until... 2025. He's a player with a bundle of experience. Obviously, he's a World Cup winner, won the Champions League as well. So he's a player that Manchester United could look to recoup a fee for. But again, he's he's probably a little bit beyond his prime, struggled with injuries as well. So Manchester United recouping a significant fee, which they can then use to invest in players in the squad is going to be difficult for them. Um, you look at Casemiro, who is he's unlikely to leave during this transfer window. Although speculation that there has been speculation about his future. Um, Ten Hag's been talking about him and his imminent return from injury. We know how important he was for Manchester United last season. He's a player that they probably can't sell. But if you go through that Manchester United squad, Jaden Sancho, somebody that we've talked about extensively on our shows in terms of Manchester United bringing him in and now he seems surplus to requirements. But again, how can you recruit money for a player that is clearly surplus to requirements? It's difficult for Manchester United. You go through our squad list and there's not many players that they can get a lot of money for. So they've got a big job ahead of them heading into this transfer window.